morning with me now, Lee, the uh, Liberal backbencher Kelly O'Dwyer and Labor's Nick Champion. Good morning to you both. Good morning. We'll get morning. to the, um, the issue of the fried rice and uh, <laughs> banana split. And the duck. With, and, and the duck with Clive yeah. Palmer. But the Joe Hockey said he didn't know about it on the Today Show, which is interesting given Martin Parkinson was also there. But Kelly O'Dwyer, first to you on this issue of collecting debt from the uh, from, from dead students. What's what's happening here? Because it did appear that the, the contradictory messages, the PM ruled it out, the Treasurer says it should be treated like any other any other loan. What's, what's happening? Do you well, know? We have no plans to make any changes to that aspect of university fees and payments. We know though that there are huge debts outstanding from university students who are over in the UK who are now earning good incomes over in the UK but under the current rules they don't actually have to pay that back. We're going to look to pursue that because we think that when people are earning a decent income in Australia over $50,000 that they should actually contribute back to their university education at the moment. The university split is incredibly beneficial to students. It's 60-40 on average um, and we're just saying that students need to pay a fair share. So why the confusion of, this morning? Well, it does appear well, a mixed, mixed message there from the PM well, and that's, Treasurer. That's, that's your interpretation. I think it's clear that we have no, no, um, no plans to, to make any changes to that at this point in time. Nick? Well the government's all over the shop on student debt and uh, clearly what's happened this morning is they've been flushed out by the media not knowing the details or perhaps they did know the details and then the, the PM uh, cut a hasty retreat uh, after some of the harsher aspects of, of this um, uh, student debt issue has been flushed out and what we're seeing is I think um, that will continue. You know, people will wake up and find out that uh, you know the interest rates doubled, uh, the amount of student debt is increasing, uh, the amount they have to borrow because fees are going up. And what this is all doing is putting another, you know, another sort of fence up on the road to being middle class. So that's not correct. I mean, the truth is, no university student, and now with our changes, nobody who's studying an advanced diploma or diploma, no student at all will have to pay any upfront what fees. What about the future? No student well, well, at all will pay any upfront well, fee. They'll only start paying back their, their debt, their Kelly, Kelly. burden Kelly, sharing Kelly, the burden in terms of their education once they earn over 50 dollars yeah, well, no, Kelly, that's not a very good defence. No, and I'll tell you why. No, no, because I'll they should share in the cost why. of their education. Well, they benefit I'll, most well, well, just, from their education. And, and Nick, Kelly, Nick the point is uh, further to that, though. If, if you don't start paying until you earn upwards of $50,000 or, or, or whatever the, I'll tell the you. amount ends up, in universities, do you really think they're going to triple their fees well, immediately because well, they'll have no students? I'll tell some you, will go no, up, some I, I, will go no, down. No, no, listen, some will go if down. You, I'll answer your question if you give me a go. Look, I'll give you a very good answer. The problem with this system is it's going to discourage from people from going in one end. But even if they do enter, at, when they exit the system, when they exit university, they're going to be settled with such high debts. They're not going to start businesses. They're not going to buy homes. They're not going to settle down and have families. And that is a big problem. That's what everybody because said just, about just, when just, the Labor Party introduced just, just, just it just didn't listen happen. to me. Just it listen didn't to me. happen. It's that a is the problem campaign. with it. And this, if you look at the United States of America, it has smashed the middle but class. This particular thing has smashed the middle class. Because what happens is everybody's trying to get into the most prestigious universities. The fees take off at one end. The amount that you have to borrow takes off. And what it sets up is a situation where you get this middle no, class. You're not borrowing. No, 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 okay, Kelly, no, Kelly, I've I've want ask you, I want to ask you. I want to ask you. You can respond. But also, the, the position is, is about equity. If you're starting from scratch, you don't have any money, the family. Yep. He doesn't have and anything. You pay no so you've got two students. You've got one student yep. that doesn't have anything, another one that's yep. got a heap. And now, who is going to be more well, encouraged to go to the expensive so, uni? So they both have access yeah, but you, to if the you've same got more, government supported scheme. If you've got more, scheme. you would be more likely well, to go to the expensive well, uni, wouldn't you? Well, because no, you've no, got, you've, because you've you got the support pay, base. No, not at all. I mean, you don't have to pay anything back until you're in over $50,000. And but the if you've also got to buy a house and then also pay for a family, how do you do that as well as start a business? The point here is it's very different to the US system. These are commercial loans that are, are talked about in the US. Well, you're it's doubling the interest rate. It's incredibly different in the US, and and people do have you're, to pay effectively upfront fees rate. or get a commercial loan in the US. Now, some fees will go up, some fees will go down, but we think that the Australian taxpayer, sure, should support um, people who are studying for their higher education. We actually now, believe now, that that's very let's important. Let's Kelly, sorry. But we're talking about getting the balance right between the students 
student and the taxpayer because none of this stuff is for free. Somebody's actually paying for it. And I know you think, you know, that the, the taxpayer has got unlimited funds to be able to contribute to, to all sorts of schemes, including pink bats and everything else. But, but the truth is that they don't. And there was a great scheme in place at the end of the coalition government, the Higher Education Endowment Fund, that was put in place by the previous coalition government, $6 billion, which was raided by Wayne Swan the second he came into lesson. government. Yeah. Right? Another well, it's actually lesson. important Another to have a history jaded lesson. history lesson. Raided by Wayne Swan when he came into government. That was going to provide right. an ongoing funding let's hear, from, let's hear from Nick now. Well, um, but, but you, but, you I mean, there are almost so many points in there I can't respond. But let me tell you this. The problem with what Kelly says, she says, oh, well, they're commercial loans in the United States. But that is what this whole process is about. You let the fees take off. You, you, put, you double the interest rate on, uh, on, on the loans. That's what they're doing, doubling the interest rate. And then what they'll do, some future budget will take that loan book and sell it to some private entity. That's not and what, that is that's what will happen. And that is their long-term goal let, let's, let's hear, Nick. Let, let's hear Nick. It's the US system where you, you outsource a whole lot of it to the private sector. That is their dream. They, that is the only well, reason how, how why... How do you get the elite well, universities then? Because uh, this is about striking the well, balance. Is it? They want to get some elite well, universities. I, I suppose you can have that argument. Do you know? A, A, do we need them? And B... Oh, well, oh. no, no. no. Oh, no. Well, let's, well, let's not be good. Let's not be good. No, no, let's have just, low I'm aspirations just, I'm for Australia. Just saying to that I'm is just, the Labor way. This. And that is just, the absolute oh, come point. On, come on, let's, let's now, look, come on. First of all, just, you've got to have the discussion just, about elite unis, which we haven't had. We haven't had that discussion. Do you think we should have and, elite unis? Uh, do well, you? Well, here's, here's the thing. Then you should say, how do we fund that? Now, there's two ways to do it. There's two ways to do it, isn't there? Yeah. Go on. Well, so you either charge the student more or you do or it out of general part. revenue. Yeah, right. that's right. Right. That's no, right. no, we're, we're saying you've got, point, to get, you've got to get the balance right. Uh, yeah, well, you're getting the balance right, OK. Student, you're getting the balance the right, OK. Part. We're right, saying yeah, right, you get the balance right. right. At the moment, we have slipped in the university world rankings, right? From last year to this year, we have gone down. We used to have six in the top 100. We now only have five. But, and in but, fact, but, in fact... But, so what are you going to do? Come on, no, no. We've got to let each other make a point. We don't have any university in the top... 30 in the world rankings. We need to be able to compete. We need to give our students the best opportunity to get whatever career yep. that they okay. want. And to well, do that, we need to be able to have so you're gonna gut, We've had a fair crack at this. Let's move on. I want to ask you about Morris Newman, the business advisor to the government, supporting uh, their uh, their approach and saying that Labor's got to come up with an alternative if, you, if you're not going to support the measures. The other thing is um, Andrew McKenzie, a well-respected corporate leader in uh, BHP, the, the chief executive, he's saying that the budget is fair and uh, it's got an appropriate focus on productivity. Your response, Nick, first. Well, I mean, there's not that much news with due respect to the individuals um, concerned. Uh, not that much news that, that they should uh, like this budget. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not I, well, I'm not. I'm just not surprised. I'm, mean, you know, it like surprise factor. Zero. Go and ask someone who's actually having to go to the doctor. Go ask a disability pensioner. Oh, they don't get interviewed by the financial papers in this country. Uh, go ask a family. Go ask someone on a 30-hour-a-week so, casual contract. So go, what, ask, go ask someone like that. See so what, what response you get. So what business thinks, what, what employers think, I'm not saying, doesn't I'm, really matter. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, important I, to the I'm not saying it doesn't matter. You? I'm just saying I'm not surprised. And if you're going <laughs> to... respect and, to, and if the to their relevant positions. of BHP is obviously does not struggle to keep the wolf from the door, so to speak. He's obviously on earning a fair whack, and for him to say it's fair, that's we're, the point Nick's saying, isn't it? Well, well isn't we're, it? We're talking, they're talking about our economy and putting, putting our budget on a sustainable footing so that Australia as a nation, we can be our best, we can be aspirational as a nation. And, and the truth is, you know, I think Nick has summed up, you know, the whole sort of labour ethos here, which is, you know, business... They, they actually think that business doesn't actually create jobs. They think that government does. And, Look, and frankly, I, I, that is completely Look, I love untrue. BHP. It is important great, for us to mind. be allowed to ensure that we put the right policy settings in place to allow business to grow so that they can employ people. It also is very important that government lives within its means because at the end of the day, someone is paying. But, Whether well, it's, well, in this case, it's, it's, it's future, pensioners. It's going to be future it's generations. Disability it's disability support pensioners. The most it's going to be the poor. It's going to be people on casual 30-hour-a-week casual yeah, contracts. The most that's that's, that's the people who you are going, you're going to make pay. Protected. They are going to be protected because we think it's important to have okay. a sustainable budget so that those people are protected not only today but well into uh, the We've future. got to go to a break. Um, okay. Speaking of the, the uh, paying the bills and the, the business community, <laughs> we've got to get some ads okay. to air and we'll be back in just a moment with Nick Champion and Kelly Edouard.
How does it feel to have someone take all of the hassle out of finding our home loan? Know the feeling. Call Mortgage Choice. Introducing Sew and Stitch. With each issue, learn to create beautiful things with fabric for you and your home. And make this beautiful seaside themed quilt. Sew and Stitch Part 1 with Seaside Quilt Starter Kit. Out now. At Telstra, we've been listening and we're starting something new. It's our personal service commitment and people like me are going to make it famous. Yeah. So now we're making it easier to get back in touch with the person you spoke to. And it's not just here, it's in store, online and on the road. Because at Telstra, we care about our customers. Oh. And we want to be famous for it. Magical sights, fanciful flights, and those who dream on beautiful nights, dream of beautiful things. The world is full of beautiful things, beautiful people too, beautiful people. Take the iSelect D-Tax and get health insurance before the June 30 tax deadline. If you don't, you could be throwing away $900. You've probably made your point. Your financial goals are as unique as you are. That's why Colonial First State's range of super and investment options are designed to help you reach them. Because even though your journey may change along the way, you should never lose sight of where you're headed. Talk to your financial advisor about how Colonial First State Super and Investment Solutions can help you find your future. Introducing Sew and Stitch. With each issue, learn to create beautiful things with fabric for you and your home. And make this beautiful seaside themed quilt. Sew and Stitch Part 1 with Seaside Quilt Starter Kit. Out now. At Telstra, we've been listening and we're starting something new. It's our personal service commitment and people like me are going to make it famous. Yeah. So now we're making it easier to get back in touch with the person you spoke to. And it's not just here, it's in store, online and on the road. Because at Telstra, we care about our customers. Oh. And we want to be famous for it. This is AM Agenda. Thanks for your company with me this morning, Kelly O'Dwyer and Nick Champion. We're going to turn now to a dinner last night between Malcolm Turnbull, the Head of Treasury, Martin Parkinson, and this man, Clive Palmer. Let's have a look. Well, I, I didn't invite Mark, uh, uh, him there. I, st I was invited by Malcolm. Malcolm sent me a text and suggested I should uh, call in and have a, a bite to eat with him, the Chinese. So the only discussion that, we, that I can recall that we had about the budget was the fact that my budget reply speech on YouTube it had over 40,000 hits otherwise we just talked about our children uh, about the fried rice there was some discussion about the duck a little bit about the chicken that's about all and the uh, and the banana split apparently was good too but <laughs> on a serious level he, they, should have, he, they should have taken Barnaby with them they could have had number 23 we'll get to Peppa Pig <laughs> later but on, I think um, that was a Thai restaurant oh, not okay, a Chinese yeah, restaurant yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right yeah. um, let's let's uh, look at it on a serious level though he, he says that nothing's they discussed whether it was the food or whatever else yeah. has changed his view he remains opposed fiercely opposed to the government's measures, which he says, I think, uh, from memory from that news conference, was a betrayal of the, the leg legacy of Menzies. Well, look, I'm sure that when Clive has the opportunity to sit down with his members in the Senate, when he has the chance to actually review the budget in detail, he'll realise that it makes a lot of sense and that uh, it's being done in the national interest and I'm very confident that uh, when when he understands all of those measures um, he'll, he'll be able to make some sensible judgments about it. Treasurer Hockey said on the Nine Network this morning that he wasn't even aware that the head of his department was was here at this function with a senior Liberal and uh, and Mr Palmer that's that's odd isn't it? It's unusual. Yeah okay Nick your thoughts? Well Canberra has a lot of lot of dinners 
lot of, I suppose, unusual quartets or... It wouldn't have been a dull dinner. No, it wouldn't have been a dull <laughs> dinner. It um, would have been an exciting dinner. Look, I mean, I think, um, I, I mean, I think there are a bunch of coalition backbenchers out there um, yeah. kind of quietly praying that the Senate saves them from this oh. government's very harsh measures. No, very harsh I don't measures. think so. I mean, they'd, they'd be out there praying every every day that the Senate blocks some of the harsher bits the of this Palmer's project. the saviour. Well, I don't know about the saviour, but, you know, they, they won't be... They'll be crying crocodile tears when the $7 fee goes down or with some of those changes to higher ed go down. Um, uh, or whether the harsher aspects that are coming down the pipe. I mean, this is their first... This is their first wave, if you like, of reforms, but we've still got... Uh, possibly GST or some other regressive tax change coming down the pipe and, and IR reform and, reform and we know we've got IR reform coming down the, the pipe because what, what scare uh, Brandis has got the Law Reform pressed. Commission or something uh, having, having a look at it. Well, I'm just responding to what your government's doing and you have to take responsibility for that, well, Kelly. You can't just sort of... Can't. It's not like not like the old days where you just sort of roll up with your lines and skate no, through interviews. No, well, You've I'm, actually got to be accountable. Well, let, let's things, hear please. Kelly now. Come I'm, on. I'm more than happy to be accountable. I mean, the truth is that the Labor government has accepted the previous... Labor government has accepted no responsibility for the financial situation that we find ourselves in today. For the budget position we find ourselves in today, you only need to look at the, the Parliamentary budget? budget Office report that also said that this was a responsible budget, that the spending was out of control with the previous government, it was not sustainable. That means making harsh measures, much, much harsher measures down the line to the most vulnerable people in our community. We need gradual change. We need to make sure that we get the spending under control. It, it, it well, comes from taxpayers. Well, okay. well let, let me ask you something because it goes to a point the Prime Minister made last night on the GP co-payment saying that uh, it's necessary to send this price signal. But isn't it contradictory though, this message about needing to rein in the spending when, on the other hand, you're not putting that money to consolidate mm the bottom line, you're putting it into another fund. Isn't the problem with the budget the mixed messages? Well, well, we're putting it into the medical research future fund for a period of, I think, around about six years while it gets up to the $20 billion that will be the capital part of that fund. And presumably after that, uh, it will go into consolidated revenue. And it is important to have a price signal. It is important because... Uh, Would you it prefer isn't... it to go to consolidated revenue now as well, opposed well, to look, this I fund? Think, I think the, the medical research future fund is, is a very, very visionary measure in our budget. But doesn't it, it contradict... Is, the, 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 isn't the problem here that you've got too many different messages? Then you've got the paper rental leave scheme well, on top. So people, you want to rein in spending, but you've got these other spending you know, initiatives. We, we don't underestimate the intelligence of the Australian people. We, we, we know that they can understand uh, that we needed to take <coughs> some, some visionary steps in this budget, and we also needed to take some, some difficult measures in this budget as well in order to rein in spending, get debt under control, and prepare for growth. And that's what this budget does. Now, now, you know, if you say that's too confusing for the Australian people, I don't agree. I think that they'll be able to understand I didn't say it's those... too confusing. No, I just said it's, it's mixed. It's, uh, I, I, it's, think, it's... I think they'll be able to understand uh, why it is that we're doing what we're doing. And I'm more than happy, you know, to, to talk about co-payments is... with you, higher education, to, to talk about all right, all let's get Nick now. Because, well, Nick, well, I well, want well. to ask you about the point, the, the fundamental point that Kelly's making is that Labor's got to take some accountability for where the budget trajectory is. But also, when you block measures totaling 40 billion that you're going to have to say well, eventually well, maybe not today but you're going to have to say sure, where the money sure, comes sure. from and at the next election we'll ha we'll roll up with a, a fully costed uh, set of policies and for the, the Australian people to consider but in the meantime um, you know, look the Australian people dealt with the last government with an election and all they're interested now is this government's budget and the problem for Kelly and uh, others is that you've got Liberal backbenchers out there. You know, yesterday, we had Dennis Jensen, only sensible thing he's ever said, uh, you know, That's identifying the in inherent contradictions, the inherent contradictions and confusion that surrounds this budget. And it's no wonder the Prime Minister and the Treasurer are saying, uh, you know, they're saying, a different thing day in day out they don't know the detail of the co-payment uh, they don't know of the co-payment's supposed safety net which okay. has got more holes in it they don't know right. the detail of the budget. Now, just finally do you two know what Peppa Pig is? Yeah it's a cartoon. Uh, program have you yeah. watched a it? Vague, uh, I haven't watched it but I know, I know what it is. Is it, is it safe or, or not? Safe. Is it gone? Well, it look, <laughs> if the ABC are going to axe the most popular program, I think that says more than anything about uh, the mentality at the ABC. Any thoughts? Oh, on well, Pepper? So, poor old 
Peppa Pig's in protection, isn't she? <laughs> you know, off, off. Um, I, I would have got bodyguards surround. You know, keeping her safe from this budget. And it's little it's wonder the, the ABC should. Look, it's, the it's ABC little wonder the ABC should, the, the should, should point out. Yeah. That, the, the, well, the ABC is making a very good point, right? And it's this: that everybody in the in the general public thinks, oh yeah, one percent cunt. Who cares? No worries. But the reality of it is, it's your local okay. programming, your local we've, news service, which goes. We've got to we've got to go, unfortunately, Nick and. Kelly, it was, it's been fun. A quick break on our agenda back in just a moment.